Hello and welcome back to A Slice of Physics. Recently we have spent some time talking about a number of concepts as it relates to circular and rotational motion and now it's time to summarize the key concepts and to help getting familiar with them we will draw comparisons to linear motion and draw some analogies. Let's start at the very beginning with linear motion. We started talking about positions typically denoted as x and they were measured in meters and changes in position occur over time t which is measured in seconds in SI units and based on that we had the concept of velocity which was measured in meters per second. The circular equivalent of those are angle instead of position which is measured in radians. Time is still the same and we got angular velocity which is measured in radians per second and angular velocity and linear velocity are, are vectors, so I'm going to show them like that. And the simplest kind of motion we have in linear motion is uniform motion, and that's motion where the velocity is a constant, so it doesn't change, and we can also say that the acceleration is zero in that case. The circular equivalent of that was uniform circular motion, where I'm going at a same speed but my direction is changing all the time as I'm tracing out parts of a circle. And the conditions for uniform circular motion was that I sweep equal amounts of angle in equal amounts of time. So that meant that my angular velocity is a constant or my angular acceleration is zero. And based on these, velocity was simply defined as the change of position or displacement over the time duration and the angular velocity is simply the amount of change of angle that is swept over the time duration. So again very similar analogies over here. Furthermore we saw that omega and v are also related. I had linear speed always equal to the angular speed times the radius of the circular motion. And then we got to constant acceleration motion where the velocity changed at a constant rate. So in this case, velocity varies and I have acceleration as a constant value. And the angular equivalent of that is constant angular acceleration. And in this case, my omega would vary and my alpha or angular acceleration would be a constant. So now I'm no longer sweeping equal angles in equal amounts of time. And in these situations, I had some additional definitions. I had acceleration that was defined as change in velocity over change in time. And in the angular sense, I'm going to have angular acceleration as change in angular velocity over change in time. And we also discussed things like when velocity and acceleration are both positive, the object is speeding up. When they're both negative, the object is speeding up. And when they have opposite directions, the object is slowing down. And that also applied here. If I had an object that was spinning in a counterclockwise direction, which is positive omega, and it was speeding up, my angular acceleration also had to be positive. But if an object that was going counterclockwise was slowing down, Omega would be positive, so alpha would have to be negative. Opposite signs will mean slowing down in terms of the spin, and same signs would mean speeding up in terms of the spin. And these analogies connecting these two continue to work as well. I've got a tangential acceleration that's related to the angular acceleration in the same manner that linear velocity was related to angular velocity. So this tangential acceleration is the acceleration along the direction of motion of an object that's going in circular motion. And we also discussed, by the way, going back to uniform circular motion, that there is a radial acceleration that corresponds to uniform circular motion. So even though the speed is not changing, the direction is changing. So there is a radial or centripetal acceleration that was given by v squared over r or omega squared times r. And in this case, the tangential acceleration for uniform circular motion would be zero because the speed along the direction of motion is not changing. Only the direction is changing in uniform circular motion. And just to look at one more equation, we had displacement given in terms of the initial velocity of an object times the time duration plus one half 
a the acceleration times the time duration squared and similarly if I want to know the amount of angle that's swept by an object that is spinning the angular displacement would be equal to the initial angular velocity times the time duration plus one half the angular acceleration times square of the time duration and by the way in terms of units acceleration was measured in meters per second squared angular acceleration was measured in radians per second squared and the radial and tangential accelerations that related to circular motion were both meters per second squared as well and most recently we talked about the force analogies between these two kinds of motions in the linear sense I had acceleration I had mass and I had force and they were related by this F equals M times A and in the angular sense I had angular force or torque and here I have angular acceleration moment of inertia and torque and they're related in the same way torque equals moment of inertia times angular acceleration and we also saw how torque is related to force and its displacement from the pivot so torque was given as the perpendicular distance from the pivot times the force or the total distance times the perpendicular component of the force so once again kind of similar analogies to what we already had here and the moment of inertia was related to mass in the sense that it was sum of all the masses times the square of their distance from the pivot or rotation axis so the units here the new things are mass kilograms and force in kilogram meter per second squared which is called Newton and in the angular equivalent I have moment of inertia that was measured in kilograms times squared meter and torque was measured in Newton meter or kilogram meter squared per second squared so this video kind of summarized all of these things because we met a lot of new concepts omega alpha theta i and just like when you meet a lot of new friends at the same time you can't remember which one is which I'm sure that's happening a little bit for you with physics as well and if you review this video you will get your arms around what these concepts are and turn them from strangers that you just met to friends that you know well and know how they're all related to each other